Next, let's move on to the left atrium. The left atrium is a quadrangular chamber situated posteriorly. As you can see in this diagram, this is the left atrium. Its appendage, that is the left auricle, projects anteriorly to overlap the infundibulum of the right ventricle, right here. Now, the left atrium forms the left two-thirds of the base of the heart, the greater part of the upper border, the parts of the sternocostal surface and the left surfaces and left border. It receives oxygenated blood from the lungs through four pulmonary veins. These are the two left pulmonary veins and these are the two right pulmonary veins and pumps it to the left ventricle through the left atrioventricular or bicuspid or the mitral orifice. Now let's look at the features of the left atrium. The posterior surface of the atrium forms the anterior wall of the oblique sinus of the pericardium. The anterior wall of the left atrium is formed by interatrial septum. The pulmonary veins open into the atrium on each side of the posterior wall. Talking about musculi pectinati that I had shown you while describing the anterior wall of the right atrium, similar structures that is the musculi pectinati are present in the left auricle. Note that it is not seen in the left atrium but in its appendage that is the left auricle. Concising the important points under the left atrium, looking at its position, the left atrium is a quadrangular chamber situated posteriorly. Its appendage, that is left auricle, projects anteriorly to overlap the infundibulum of the right ventricle. The left atrium forms the left two-thirds of the base of the heart. The greater part of the upper border, parts of the sternocostal and left surfaces and left border. It receives oxygenated blood from the lungs through the four pulmonary veins and pumps it into the left ventricle through the left atrioventricular or bicuspid or the mitral orifice. Looking at its features, the posterior surface of the atrium forms the anterior wall of the oblique sinus of the pericardium. The anterior wall of the atrium is formed by interatrial septum. The pulmonary veins open into the atrium on each side of the posterior wall and musculi pectinati are present only in the auricle. Moving on to the left ventricle, looking at its position, the left ventricle receives oxygenated blood from the left atrium and pumps it into the iota. It forms the apex of the heart, the part of the sternocostal surface, most of the left border and the left surface and left two-thirds of the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. Looking at the features of the left ventricle, externally the left ventricle has three surfaces, the anterior or the sternocostal surface, the inferior or the diaphragmatic surface and the left surface. Looking at the left ventricle in this diagram, Externally, the left ventricle has three surfaces, that is the anterior or the sternocostal surface, the left surface as you can see right here, as well as the inferior or the diaphragmatic surface as you can see in the posterior view of the heart, right here. Now let's look at the internal features of the left ventricle through this diagram. As you can see, this is the internal view of the heart. So this is the heart, it is open this way. So this is the left ventricle the left atrium, this is also the left ventricle, the left atrium, this is the right ventricle, the right atrium, the right ventricle and right atrium. So we are going to concentrate on these areas that is the left ventricle. Now internally the left ventricle is divided into two parts, the lower rough part with trabeculae carniae and the upper smooth part as you can see right here also known as the aortic vestibule gives origin to the ascending aorta. So the oxygenated blood enters through the left atrium to the left ventricle and goes through the aorta. Now the interior of the ventricle shows two orifices. First is the left atrioventricular or bicuspid orifice that is guarded by the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve that you can see right here and the aortic orifice that is guarded by the aortic valve right here. There are two well developed papillary muscles in the left ventricle that is the posterior papillary muscle here and the anterior papillary muscle. The chordae tendine from both the muscles as you can see right here are attached to both the cusps of the mitral valve. Finally, the walls of the left ventricle right here 
are three times more thicker than those of the right ventricle. Concising the important points under the left ventricle, looking at its position, the left ventricle receives oxygenated blood from the left atrium and pumps it into the iota. It forms the apex of the heart, the part of the sternocostal surface, most of the left border and left surface and the left two-thirds of the diaphragmatic surface. Looking at its features, externally the left ventricle has three surfaces, the anterior or sternocostal surface, inferior or diaphragmatic surface and left surface. Internally, it is divided into two parts, the lower rough part with trabeculae carniae, the upper smooth part or the aortic vestibule gives origin to the ascending aorta. The interior of the ventricle shows two orifices, the left atrioventricular or bicuspid or the mitral orifice guarded by the bicuspid or mitral valve and the aortic orifice guarded by the aortic valve. There are two well-developed papillary muscles, the anterior and posterior papillary muscles. Chordae tendineae from both the muscles are attached to both the cusps of the mitral valve. The walls of the left ventricle are three times thicker than those of the right ventricle. Looking at the clinical anatomy, the area of the chest wall overlying the heart is called precordium, increased heart rate is called tachycardia, decreased heart rate is called bradycardia and irregular heart rate is called arrhythmia.